All right, strange doings, strange world, strange topics. Russia, almost a coup d'etat. Now the question is, has Vladimir Putin lost his grip on power? Joining us now to talk about it, Kash Patel, former deputy director of national intelligence and former Department of Defense chief of staff. He's also worked on the House Intelligence Committee, et cetera, et cetera. Kash, you know, I wanted to get your take. I've seen uh, everybody talking about this. Uh, you're a, a rather plain-spoken fellow. I mean, what? First of all, so I'm I'm like doing my radio show, okay, Saturday morning, and all of a sudden I look at the internet, and um, the Wagner Group is marching towards Moscow. Surprise, surprise. Uh, second of all, they got more than halfway to Moscow. Why, in your judgment, did they stop? Because it looked to me like they were rolling right through, and if uh, they intended a coup d'état. Uh, it looked like Putin was out of town on a plane to St. Petersburg. They could have done it. So why'd they stop? Well, it's good to be with you, Larry. And I think the answer is interconnected to their first question. The answer is, has, has Vladimir Putin lost power? My answer is no. And as I sit here in my hometown of Las Vegas, Nevada, I'm going to tell the bookmakers to bet long on Vladimir Putin. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. People haven't considered the reality that Vladimir Putin may have staged this entire operation. Now, before everyone goes, whoa, whoa, you're crazy, remember the large contingent of people that think Vladimir Putin blew up his own Nord Stream 2 pipeline. We still haven't really resolved that one. But turning back to this point, a coup d'etat with the largest mercenary force on planet Earth, um, funded by Vladimir Putin himself and operated by his buddy, lasted less than 12 hours without Vladimir Putin ever making a presence and ended in the head of the Wagner Group, uh, Prigozhev, uh, going to Belarus in retirement, and Vladimir Putin picks up 25,000 former KGB officials turned mercenary officers. I'd say that's a pretty good day in Vladimir Putin's world. Did Putin actually leave Moscow? Do we know that? By all public reporting, I mean, he's, he's probably, if he had staged this thing, that's what one of the things he would do in case it went sideways. And the other point is, the one man that could have charged Vladimir Putin for power... Prigozhin is now out of the picture, a retired billionaire next door in Belarus. So I go back to my point of he's just picked up more soldiers. He's just picked up a huge propaganda win because everybody's talking about Russia, which is what he wants. And he sidelined what was supposed to be his number one adversary. So you think Prigozhin pulled back uh, and mm -hmm. took some kind of deal. I'm going to ask you about the so-called deal in a second because he couldn't win. Cash Patel, is that or because it just seemed like they could win. But I don't know anything about this. You do. Yeah. So the so the the rift really wasn't between Prigozhin and Vladimir Putin to break into it. The rift was between Prigozhin and a chief general officer in the army, basically the secretary of defense under Vladimir Putin. Prigozhin was ticked off that during the Ukrainian war conflict, that individual unleashed a uh, escalation in war effort that was supposed to target Ukrainians, but actually killed his mercenary soldiers. So it was a little bit of a more of a internal fight at the lower ranks, and Prigozhin used that, and the world media sort of lopped Putin into that category. Putin stayed out of that entire uh, diagram. And in this instance, I think the sides have come together to say what's best for Russia, knowing that even Prigozhin could not have knocked off Vladimir Putin with the might that he has behind him. So, Kash Patel, does this have any impact on Ukraine? I mean, are the Russians, they're not pulling out of Ukraine, or they're not going to give up more terror. Does it have any impact at all on Ukraine? I think it has an absolutely enormous impact on Ukraine that tilts in the favor of Russia. Because as I said, even if Vladimir Putin doesn't pick up all 25,000 mercenaries who, by the way, operate all over the world, including Africa, places where we at the United States of America have directly engaged them, even if he picks up half that number, he's just picked up the equivalent of a special forces intelligence operational unit that he doesn't have to train, that he's given a hall pass to in terms of any criminal conduct, and now they're going to go in there and back him and his adversary in Prigozhin is sitting a retired billionaire next door in Belarus in a broker deal that took 12 hours. I have to remind the world that. A coup, a resolution, and a retirement party in 12 hours. So, <laughs> a retirement party, right you are. So, basically, Putin will be dictator for life? 
I think he's going for life because the one man that the world thought had the WASTA and the physical ability to do it with his mercenary army is now completely out of the picture and given up said mercenary army to Vladimir Putin. So I don't know who else is going to challenge him for that leadership role. So just to make this right, because you're giving me, a, a, shall I say, a different view, and that's why we love having you on the show. Uh, you think this strengthens Russia's hand in Ukraine because Russia now picks up more forces and resources and maybe more efficient forces as well. Yeah, but let me also uh, tip it off with this. It's more ruthless forces. Oh. These are mercs. These are mercenary paid officers. They are paid to fight and kill. They are paid by Russia's big oil operation and they are endlessly funded with machinery, weapons and arms. And these guys go all over the world. We have taken them on and seen their ground game in places like Africa, and it is scary. And now Vladimir Putin has got them to deploy into the Ukraine. Uh, Cash, um, you think Donald Trump is right? We sh uh, the next president should make a deal and stop the uh, killing in Ukraine? Absolutely. Look, as a former chief of staff at DOD, and we ran the Afghan withdrawal along with other withdrawals, war is the ultimate last option and in this instance there's no reason for america to engage another 20-year conflict and no more reason for innocent ukrainians and russians to die and i believe president trump is the only one with the wasta to do it because vladimir putin would actually take his call and say wait a second we don't want to create an actual adversary in the u.s all right cash patel great stuff outspoken and we love you for it thank you take care